given up with the phone, I'm onto my 10 year old camcorder now and um, it's hot in here today. So, I've got some uh, hydration and if you don't believe that it's hot in here, here we go. I don't know if you can read that. There we are. It says uh, 28.9 degrees centigrade in here right now. And I've got all the doors shut and the windows shut because um, it's a very windy day here and um, otherwise you wouldn't be able to hear what I'm saying. So I'm sat down in my greenhouse today because um, I've hurt my ankle. I was um, taking some branches off a cherry tree yesterday. And then, and then there's also... That all went absolutely fine, no problems at all. And just as I was on like, the last but one cut, I stepped down awkwardly off the ladder and I've sprained my ankle. I've been to A&E today and had it x-rayed and uh, they say there's nothing broken, so keep using it, keep walking on it, don't twist it. So um, I'm sat down at the moment and that might cause me a problem because today's Sunday and today's the day for me to uh, check my pH levels, check my nutrient levels and undoubtedly swap some solution. And um, it's all down on the ground and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to crawl around, but we'll, we'll give it a try. I forgot about this. Every time I turn off the air pump, of course, to record a video, um, water comes back through all the air stones and causes a little puddle on the floor. Just a quick rundown of the crops I'm growing in here. I've got the uh, lettuce salad bowl, lettuce lola rossa, which is a purple lettuce. Or it's supposed to be a purple lettuce, but when I'm growing it in hydroponics, it's a green lettuce. Um, I noticed MHP gardener Bobby had the same thing with his purple lettuce in hydroponics. So I'm guessing there's some mineral that gives them the purple colour that um, just isn't in the nutrients I'm feeding. We've got uh, Speedy Salad's mixed leaves. I've no idea what's in there. It doesn't say just mixed leaves, but they're all good. I'm growing some mustard cress. That's fantastic with hummus and a bit of toast. Um, I've planted a couple of cauliflower. Whether they'll make it or not, I don't know. I only planted them a few weeks ago, which is far too late in the season. Some little jam. Got cucumber telegraph improved. Oh, broccoli. Um, Samson F1, um, yeah. we've got some Rocket Gourmet, that's fantastic with spiced meats, pepperoni, salami, that kind of, any meat really, it's a gorgeous combination. Um, I've got Tomato Sweet Aperitif, this is my cherry tomato, vine tall indeterminate tomatoes. I've got a Tomato Garten Pearl, which is the lower bush style um, tomato. California Sweet Peppers, um, or Sweet California Wonder Peppers and some peas, kelp and wonders. Just a quick round up of some plants. Cucumbers all coming on nicely. Got, um, we've had three cucumbers off this so far and each one of those grew one at a time. Now the plant seems determined to grow five or six cucumbers all at the same time. Can't find them all at the moment, they're all there. They're all getting big and these things like double in size every day so that one's going to be ready. Three or four days from now, it's going to be a huge telegraph pole sized cucumber. Um, peppers are coming along nicely, but um, still no sign of any peppers on them. Keep getting flowers, keep getting pollinators in here, but uh, no sign of any peppers. Oh man, just look at these strawberries. This is, um, well, this is all I did was copy what Austin Family Garden channel said. I'm going to be eating them today, and I can tell you. They taste fantastic. That'll be our second crop off the strawberries. They've only just got started, so we had 12 strawberries off them last weekend, and we'll have some more this weekend. Right, question for the hydroponic community on YouTube. What's going on with this here? This happened when I had one of the strawberries in um, just laundry tubs on the kitchen windowsill before I had any air pumps or anything and I thought I'd try some cracky strawberries and they went really really well for a while and then the ends of some of the leaves blackened but it's just one plant that it's affecting. There's 11 plants in this rail and just one of them seems to be bothered by it. Now I think this might be some kind of nutrient imbalance going on because the solution of feeding that rail will be four weeks old today. It's been topped up with more nutrients but the the actual water is four weeks old today. Um, the reason I keep topping up rather than swapping out is I've got 40 litres in each of these containers because um, I had heard that in NFT rails the nutrients can heat up quite quickly and um, lettuce doesn't like it when its roots get hot. The lettuce here is looking really rather sad at the moment. 
Um, it's quite a quite sad reason as well. We, we had a rabbit who got sick and um, tried to nurse it back to health and towards the end this the rabbit would eat is my hydroponic lettuce. So she was getting um, the salad bowl, little gem, lola rossa, um, bits of these mixed leaves. Um, but sadly she didn't make it and she had to go to the vets and take the big sleep. So we, we had a very sad day here on Friday. Rest in peace Harry. Now you guys might notice I'm not using tomato clips, I'm using something else. These are um, cable tie produced by a friend of mine called um, Wrapstrap and they're um, stretchy and elasticated and um, they also, if you put them on right, they grip to both the string and give you an adjustable uh, elasticated place for the plant to sit inside. Um, so they uh, come in a strip like that and you just tear them off and then find somewhere around about the middle thread it through itself in the middle and pull it and at some point it'll get really tight and then it'll turn itself inside out and it locks on absolutely totally securely to that string that's not going anywhere and then the next bit just comes around in whatever size you need and you can make it as big or as small as you like for any size of plant and then to take it off again you just thread it back through itself And we're off. So today I'm going to drain this reservoir for the top rail which is going to be uh, four weeks today that that hasn't been drained for and I'm just going to top up the nutrients in that reservoir and in all the DWC buckets. Right so first of all I'm going to um, disable my float valve because I don't want this refilling and I'm just going to put the wrap strap around there, thread it through itself that will hold the float valve up in the air and then more liquid's going to go in there. Next I'm going to pump out what's left in there and um, get it into another container. I went with 40 litres because I'd heard that NFT rails can suffer from the heat and the nutrient solution heats up as it flows through the rail with the rail acting like a radiator basically soaking up the heat of the sun. Um, the nutrient solution can get very hot and then you're basically washing your plants roots in hot water. So um, the only way I could think to try and counter that is thermal mass. More liquid, bigger tanks. There we go, pump on, draining one reservoir into another. That's got all the nutrient out there and the tank is empty. We've got 20 litres of it in there and the other 20 litres are already in the red watering can for my wife. Marvellous job, babe. Thank <laughs> you. And here's the first hydroponic crop I ever grew, mustard cress. Fantastic stuff, so easy, tissue paper, tap water, nothing else. Yes, that is vacuum cleaner hose there. Now, out of the tap, my tap water comes with a pH of 8.4, which is way, way, way too alkaline for me. So um, I drop that down to about six and a half or so before it goes into anything else. Um, that way when it mixes with the nutrient solution, it's not so alkaline as this. Um, just add a bit of pH down, um, 5 mils into this barrel. 5 mils into 50 litres does exactly what I need. And here we go. pH is coming down to 6.3 there, it's still mixing up. pH at 6.2, hopefully it will come out somewhere around about 6.4. Um, yeah, looks pretty much spot on perfect to me. So now that water is good to be used everywhere for everything. It's been bubbling away for a few hours so all the chlorine in the water should have gone. Um, I'm not going to get any funny chlorine salts if I put mix this with nutrients now. So I'm going to get on and um, refill that reservoir. Um, I couldn't get hold of General Hydroponics or Master Blend over here. But um, this is what they had at my, well, they had so much stuff at my local hydroponics store. But um, this is one of the things they had there and it seemed to work out quite cost effective and most importantly for me, I uh, managed to find a guide on exactly what to use, exactly when, and that uh, helped me a lot. So I found this list on the internet 
of uh, different pH levels and nutrient strengths for all sorts of different plants. And this is how I've worked out which plants go in which rails. So, I mean, basically I've got a rail for leafy stuff, a rail for strawberries and peppers, and everything else is in DWC buckets, or it can make do. I'm going to do the DWC buckets, and I thought I'd show you this. So, um, as I've shown before, they've got a common rail that links them all together, that takes them to a freshwater reservoir, and into that, fresh, into that line I fit a little ball valve. And what I can do now, very conveniently, is, um, now, the clever thing, you might notice my extra long lengths of pipe, but um, if I lift up any piece of pipe, I'll turn that off, lift up any piece of pipe, I'm now above the water level, so I, I can easily do that without a problem. Um, this is a little pump from my water-cooled PC. Um, I've got, obviously this isn't the one I use on the PC, it's just a spare one. So I can hook up that and um, hook a hose on there. And that's um, taking me off to my draining bucket. And then with a little help from a very small lead acid battery that I've um, revived at some point, we can pump the nutrients in. And here we go. So that's how much uh, nutrients were in the four DWC buckets. And um, they've gone down from an AC of three a week ago. And we're down to 1.6 to 1.8 now. 1.7 I guess is the magic number in the middle. So I'm gonna mix up a new batch EC3, same quantity, and then pump it back into the system. Okay, so I've mixed up my fresh nutrients here. I've got an EC of 3.1, pH of 5.9 there. So now I'm just going to swap these hoses around and um, then we should be able to pump this back into the DWC buckets and then we're job done. Now let's uh, see if this is going to be nice and work for you. 50-50 whether it'll get success. Depends whether this um, pump can prime itself or not. Otherwise I might have some fun to do. Hopefully, the fact it's got such a small lift on it will do the job. And I think we're working there, and I won't bore you with watching the uh, nutrients slowly flow back. Can anyone tell me what's going on with these peas? They get this milky white powdery in a hot mills in a perfect powdery stuff, it just wipes off. But um, it doesn't look normal, that's for sure. And I, I think it must be some nutrient that the peas are taking up and that's just um, one of the salts that's just appearing on their leaves for some reason. So if anyone can tell me what's going on with that, um, whether it's anything to worry about, the plants don't seem to suffer at all from it. Just looks a bit unsightly. So um, I'd love to know what's going on there. Hope it wasn't too boring. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time, folks.